Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why T.O. just did something I actually respect. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you why last night proved Bryce Harper is worth more than any baseball player on the planet. Speak for Yourself starts now. Isn't Hank Aaron still on this planet? <laughs> <laughs> really? All right, hello and welcome. We're joined today by Fox NFL analyst Mark Schlereth and the NFL Network's Bucky Brooks. Let's start with some football, where Le'Veon Bell and the Steelers couldn't come to terms on a new deal yesterday, despite the fact that, according to the NFL Network's Ian Rappaport, Bell turned down a five-year deal worth $70 million. Ooh. Even still, our friend here, Bucky Brooks, thinks Bell is getting a raw deal, tweeting, quote, the bias against running backs is real. Le'Veon Bell has been one of the most productive players in the NFL history, yet his franchise tag and contract demands are lower than the average per year of Sam Bradford, Ryan Tannehill, Case Keenum, Blake Bortles, and Andy Dalton. Think about that. It's also lower than Bell's teammate, Antonio Brown, who makes $17 million a year. And, Colin, I think that's the crux of it. I think Le'Veon Bell believes he's every bit as valuable to the Steelers as Antonio Brown. Do you agree with Yeah, him? I think they're both equally valuable, and neither is nearly as valuable as Big Ben. And that's how I feel about it. If, you, if I was a GM and you, and you said, okay, your first draft, you're going to draft six guys, and they're all going to be home runs, I'd go, okay, give me the positions. Quarterback, pass rusher left tackle, defensive tackle, corner, then I would consider an elite perimeter player. Maybe go to a second pass rusher. I like running backs. I like wide receivers. But we got, a, we got teams in this league now, New England, Philly, Saints, Atlanta, that are doing it with two and three running backs, not a superstar back. Le'Veon Bell is an argument about Big Ben's contract. To me, he's looking and saying, I contribute just as much as Antonio Brown. He gets 17 million a year. You're offering me 14 million a year. That's the rub. That's the difference. And looking at it that way, I kind of agree with Le'Veon Bell. Look, he let the cat out the bag last summer when he said he wanted to be paid like a running back one and a wide receiver two, based on the production he does for the Steelers. Well, when you look at what wide receivers are making, 16 million, 16 million, 14 million. Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins, Brandon Cooks just got paid. He has a gripe. He should be paid. He's an explosive offensive player who's doing historic things. His scrimmage yards per game is higher than Jim Brown, Billy Sims, Barry Sanders. That's historic. And you're right. He looks at Antonio Brown. He gets his money at 17 per, but he is just as valuable. And the way they use him as a running back, as a wide receiver, as a playmaker, he deserves to be paid like one of the big three there. And I know people focus on the position, I think you got to focus on the player and what he contributes to that team. I think, uh, you know what, it's, it's interesting because he does. He produces the guy as a freak show, right? A freak at the running back position, best patient runner in, in football, best setup block guy in football in my imagination. Caught 85 balls out of the backfield last year, and they wind up as a wide receiver. H here's the deal, though. Life ain't fair, <laughs> and you chose to play running back. And guess what? Running backs aren't as valued. I think one thing that we have to understand about the running back and the kind of the lifespan of the running back, when most of us hit 27, 28, we're entering our prime. Our athletic ability may have dropped a bit, but our football acumen has gained to a point where we're at our prime for the next five years. When you hit 28 as a running back, his, history would tell you in this league, you're, you're on your way out. We just had DeMarco Murray retire after seven years in the National Football League. That's the history of playing that position. And whether you're catching the ball out of the backfield or whether you're running between the tackles, you're gonna take, you're gonna take shots. I picked up a fumble once as a rookie, <laughs> all right? One time, I swear to you, Mike Merriweather, I think he came off the sideline <laughs> and broke my chin. And I was laying on the ground and I, f I literally fumbled, but the ball got pinned on the ground between me as seven DBs hit me. Like they, they had 17 guys on the field at the time. I took about three, I thought I was gonna score. I took about three steps and just got plastered. I mean, literally plastered. And I was laying on the bottom of that pile going, note to self, Never again. The pig skin attracts a lot of attention. Yeah. And I I'm telling you, it's just the history of that position would tell you that at a certain point, 
you, you, diminishing returns. We're just not going to pay. But I think the game is changing. And here's why I think it's changing. It's a passing league. Mm -hmm. And when you look at these big guys, you talk about Todd Gurley, David Johnson, and then Lev Bell. They're going to age gracefully because they can be transitioned into really pass catchers. You think about in our day when we were playing, Larry Sinners, mm -hmm. Ronnie Harmon, the way those guys were able to give you scrimmage yards, catching the ball out the right. backfield. I think the big thing for Levy and Bill is don't look at him as a traditional running back where all of his production is in the running game. It's how he impacts the game, total yards from scrimmage. That's why he's fighting because Ty Gurley, David Johnson, and this new school class of running backs, they're coming and they right. deserve to be right. paid it, like it, those I, guys. I will tell you this, though. Think about the way the game has evolved. And, and you're right. Remember when every team had a fullback? Guess what? Fullbacks have a gripe right now. They should sue the NFL because none of them have jobs. Right? But nobody, there's four teams that use a fullback. Remember when you had one in the box safety to stop the run? Now you got to have guys in the backfield that can cover, guys that can interchange, guys that can, one guy can come down, one guy can stay deep. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a different Mark, game. Mark, I agree with you that the game is changing, but Le'Veon Bell's position is, it's not changing in a way that my value is decreasing because I can hurt you in the passing game mm -hmm. and in the running game. Le'Veon Bell, and I, I've given this more thought from yesterday and just all morning just thinking about this and researching it, he's got a great case because in his mind, he right. is the best playmaker on that team, and somehow he's got to eat at the negotiating table after Antonio Brown. In his mind, he's more valuable than Antonio Brown. But I don't but think that, value, I, he nobody, touches right. the ball Nobody's more. Nobody's going to argue his value. His value is great. But remember when Jimmy Graham wanted to be paid like a wide receiver? Do they just go, you know what? You're right. Jimmy you Graham are. Not, okay, not how about Rob? Graham. Okay, Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski in lines up much. in line. He in lines up in much. the slot. He gets outside. He does wide receiver things at the tight end position. If he were healthy, they'd pay him like, <laughs> they'd pay him like a wide receiver. <laughs> but, 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 I did. It, but the team doesn't have to pay you. They ain't going to pay you. That's what, if they have the hammer, they're going to swing it. Leverage is created by scarcity, okay? That's why every town has one guy who's in waste management and he's rich. And there's a million restaurateurs, 50% go out of business. There's a million restaurants. About one guy a town's willing to deal in waste management. There's a scarcity of pass rushers. There's eight great ones in the world. There's a scarcity of quarterbacks. There's eight in the world. This past NFL draft had eight draftable backs in How six. How many Le'Veon Bells? So? Okay. Saquon Barkley's Todd, one. I watched Todd Gurley play 16 games last year. He's unbelievable. Ezekiel Elliott, unbelievable. Royce Freeman, Saquon Barkley could come in. Georgia had two guys. They could both be really good. Could. Scarcity is it drives often your and, worth. And the other thing about that is, and I agree with you, but the other thing about that is, is that the majority of teams, let's call it 28 teams, have three backs. Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl last year. Not one guy had 1,000 yards. New I think England. I think, I think their best running back the difference had those. 400 yards rushing. Those running back by committee teams that are winning Super Bowls mm -hmm. have a great quarterback. So the better the quarterback, you can deal with lesser talent at skill positions. But for the overwhelming majority of the league, right. you need a dude to alleviate the pressure on the quarterback. Right. Alex Smith's season, it's not a coincidence that Kareem Hunt came in and was a difference maker as an impact player. All right, to another guy looking for a new deal, Aaron Rodgers. Currently makes a fraction of lesser quarterbacks like Kirk Cousins and Matt Ryan. Packer President Mark Murphy says both sides have a common interest, getting a deal done. And Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio has a novel suggestion for how to give Rodgers his due, writing, quote, Here's an idea inspired by the news that the Packers generated $454 million in gross revenue and $34 million in profit. Rodgers should base his total pay not on the salary cap, but on the money this publicly traded business earns. Whitlock, Rodgers currently the 10th highest paid quarterback. He's underpaid, right? No, he's getting paid what he negotiated, and, uh, you know, he'll be in position to negotiate a better deal. Uh, you know, I, I, Florio, I just think, needed to click. So, you know, I, maybe I, he should write about how I should be, you know, married <laughs> to uh, Holly Berry and Jennifer Aniston, I guess, because that, that would be nice for Aaron Rodgers to be paid based on how much revenue they generate, but it's not going to happen. Uh, we keep feeding... Uh, this narrative that something's, oh my God, something's wrong here with, uh, with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers negotiated this deal. He's about to renegotiate a different deal, but I, I, I don't think he should be trying to be the highest paid Agreed. player 
in the league. I think he should be trying to do a deal so they can have the best team in the league. By the way, take, just talk about salary cap leagues, hockey, NBA, football. Monster contract equals less flexibility. Green Bay struggles with free agents to begin with. Like they're at a Buffalo and Green Bay are at a decided free agent disadvantage, the weather, whatever, market size. Now you're going to add that? Less cap flexibility? By the way, Tom Brady's never been the highest paid quarterback. Who cares? Tim Duncan, never highest paid player. Who cares? Jordan, for 90% of his career, not the highest paid guy. Who cares? Nobody talks about it at a bar 20 years later. You know, this Aaron was the third highest paid quarterback. They talk about, you know, he should have won two, but Ted Thompson could never get him players. Aaron's legacy right now, he's outperforming his contract. Joe Flacco's legacy, the contract's outperforming him. Which legacy would you rather have? I think Aaron, people look at Aaron and know he's outperformed his money. They're on his side. I think there has to be a market correction for Aaron because at the end of the day, the money that they see on the screen is how people view you as being respected. For Aaron Rodgers, everybody, when he looks at Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo, and all these other guys tipping the $30 million mark and he's at $22 million, he certainly wants to be recognized as the best quarterback in football. He's one of only three quarterbacks that I think are in the VIP club that can carry their team. We've seen it. I think you have to pay him more than you pay Kirk Cousins because you have to justify and reward him for being the best quarterback He's willing in to do what Kirk Cousins did, change teams. Is he would play on a series of franchise tag deals. He, he is playing for the most legendary franchise in the NFL. He's right there with Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and now Aaron Rodgers. There's a lot of value in being the Packers franchise quarterback. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of value in winning championships. And how do we know? What's the caveat behind Aaron Rodgers' name right now? Yeah, he's only got one Super Bowl. This guy is one of the greatest quarterbacks we have ever watched play here in recent years, obviously. But in the last decade, he's a phenomenal player. And the caveat that you hear in the barroom discussion about Aaron Rodgers only, only took him to one championship. Now, he's a lot like what I thought about Indianapolis when they had Peyton Manning. I was like, that's an 8-8 eight and eight team that finishes 12-4 and four every year because of their quarterback. <laughs> right. And the Indianapolis people were really ticked off at me. And it turned out they were mad at me because I kept calling them an 8-8 eight and eight team talent-wise, right? And they were right. I was wrong. They, they lost Peyton Manning. They went four, or two and 14, right? <laughs> they were way worse than eight and eight. That was the Indianapolis Colts. Aaron Rodgers and, and the Green Bay Packers, you saw the devastation. They went seven and nine. Well, and, and he played in some games. Yeah. They went seven and nine. That team needs Aaron Rodgers. And, and I, will, I will say this. It comes down to legacy for him now. He's considered one of the best that's ever played. His legacy is how many, how many more chances does he get at a Super Bowl? So I tend to be with you. He needs to be paid. I get that he needs to be paid. I know that you can fund these things in a way where you're going to get a lot of money and you're going to be taken care of for the rest of your life. He needs championships more than he needs a $30 million contract. The only thing about that is, say he's making $22 million. Mm -hmm. So there's more money for them to spend on the other guys. They haven't got the other yeah. guys right. So if <laughs> I'm taking good. a discount, right. cool, but I want to win. If they're going to be able to promise him that we're going to make sure that you have all the support and cast, all the mm -hmm. stuff that you need, then fine. But if not, the $30 million goes to, hey, you make us right for all the mistakes that we I, make. I, I'll go back to Jason's that's point. point. Yeah, that's a good point. Jason's point, though, is Kirk Cousins was willing to move. Aaron Rodgers signed this contract before he had to. By the way. He doesn't have to sign this now. He's got plenty of money. He's making $10 million a year in ads. Why not wait for two years? I mean, again, you start looking at what Kirk Cousins did. He said, okay, I'm out of here. He fought with his GM. He fought with his owner. Is Aaron, Aaron's been passive aggressive in the media. Would he be aggressive? Kirk Cousins wasn't passive aggressive. He was aggressive against his team. I, I think it's more difficult for Aaron because yeah. there is no owner. Yes. And again, so when you're in Kirk Cousins or any of these other teams that has an owner who's invested in winning, their reputation's on the line, it's easier to be outspoken and passive aggressive. I, I, I think we're throwing a pity party for Aaron that's kind of not deserved because, again, if he wants to be paid more money, there's a path to get it. It may take him a year or two, but there's a path for him to be the highest mm -hmm. paid player in the league. He's got to be willing to go that path. I, I think you made a hell of a point, though, giving this discount to a team that can't get it right. When you're Tom Brady and you're passing up money, but they're making all the right decisions around you, it's a lot easier. Welcome back. 
Mark Schlereth, Bucky Brooks. Here we go. Let's move to Terrell Owens, who's not only busy causing headaches for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, <laughs> but might be ready to bring his antics to our friendly neighbors to the north. Reportedly, T.O. has activated a 10-day clause which will allow him to negotiate a deal for a football comeback with the Edmonton Eskimos, who have his rights in the CFL. Whitlock, T.O. playing Canada, like it? Absolutely. Love it. I, I, anytime these guys talk about, I want to play in the NFL, I want to play in the NFL, my position always is, if you really want to play, go play in Canada. Prove it to me. And he's doing that. He's putting his actions, potentially, where his mouth has been. I'd have no problem with it. Fred Belitnikoff played in the CFL at the oh. end of his career. Oh, he is... wouldn't be the first, you know, and again, Teal's been inducted or been yeah. voted into the Hall of Fame. But I got no problem with it. If the guy loves the game, should, why not? Should Howard Stern go uh, DJ in Edmonton? <laughs> should Elon Musk go back to business school at junior college? If you Once you're it. a star, there's 300 guys in the Hall of Fame. You're, you're going to go back and play. Why not go to, like, uh, Plano Junior College? What? It's authentic. If, this, if the guy loves the game. He's a Hall of Famer. You can't make a step backwards like that. Call. Are you going to do a uh, weekly news flyer? I uh, might. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I might. I'll call your agent and say, you're fired. <laughs> Look, sometimes you don't want to hear the cheering stop. There's nothing like running onto the field and being a player. T.O. is still looking for that one thing that will fulfill him, like being a player. He loves the spotlight. He loves the light. Going to Canada gives him an opportunity to do it. We've never seen a Hall of Fame player continue to play. This would be unprecedented. But when you saw the workouts and you saw him run 4-4 on a track at UCLA, I'm like, this dude is really playing. When you talk to people, he's at UCLA pulling sleds and doing all this stuff. This football Jones that he has is real. To go to Canada and risk it all for $55,000, $60,000 a year, you really got to be You don't think in. it looks sad? No. Did, did Michael Jordan play with the Wizards? It's still the NBA. <laughs> he didn't okay. play in the G League. There's, yeah. There, there's a couple things. Like, I, could, I guarantee in this suit and tie, I could go down to the weight room down there and bench 405 like it's nothing. <laughs> I, I guarantee I can't get hit. I, I, will, I will break like a piece of peanut brittle if I get hit. He's 44 years old. His career ended when he got cut by the Seahawks in 2012. There hasn't been interest since then. He hasn't caught a ball since 2010. <laughs> right. So my, my thought is go to Canada because you know what? I'm excited about you going to Canada because I'm going to see one highlight like I did with Johnny Manziel, then I'm never going to hear about it again. <laughs> and then I don't have to, then we don't have to talk I about it anymore. Believe. If he signs with Edmonton, do you know when their first game is? No. The same day as the Hall of Fame Beautiful. game on that Thursday. Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> the same, that is awesome. <laughs> the same that day. is awesome. People would pay attention. The rate, you know, I can't say the Rays would be through the roof, but I would watch. A lot of people would watch. How and, great and, would that be? And I, honest to goodness, <laughs> oh, God. I, I, see, I can't knock a man that wants to work. I, I really can't. And I'm not, I'm, there's not a bit of sarcasm in this. If this dude loves football enough that he wants to go out there in 44 in Canada and play, I got nothing but respect for him. Really. I, I, I say Don't that. You think that's the most authentic thing he would have done ever. It, let's say, I, I'm not even going to give examples. He has a gold jacket. If Chris Carter... It's not coming off. It doesn't matter. OJ got in all kinds of trouble. They don't take your gold jacket away. That is forever. He's accomplished that. I, there's no way. We see, it, we see guys playing flag football on TV. The same thing. Colin, it doesn't leave you. You, you never can replace that itch that you want to scratch by playing. This is his opportunity to do it. Now, I wouldn't want to do it at 40-plus to take a lick. But, but shouldn't he? Don't, isn't he bigger than that? No, 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 no. It never leaves. Why are you bigger than the game? The game is the biggest thing. Why is he? If he loves the game and still wants to play it and is willing to deal with the arrows that will be thrown at him by guys like you, it would make my respect for him inch up. Uh, listen, really I'm going would. to Canada in August because I like Victoria and their food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like Canada. But it feels to me like Howard Stern going and working hey, in look, Omaha. Man, Reggie White played in the USFL. Jim Kelly played in the USFL. Before. At, at, the, beginning of, at the beginning of their careers. I, you know, it's fine. If, if, you, if you truly have that itch and you truly just want to play, then I have, I have no problem with you wanting it, to scratch that well, itch. Who's your favorite band ever? 
Uh, I'm a U2 guy. Yeah, I like that. I don't want to see U2 at the TikTok saloon in 20 <laughs> years. It, may, it bums me out. That would be amazing. I, I would want to see my favorite band wherever. If Michael Jackson came up out of the grave, I'd go watch him play wherever. At the, at the local saloon? In any. You don't think it'd be sad? No! I think it would be... It would, look, man, if you loved Elvis, you went, you went and saw Fat Elvis. It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Vegas again. Come on, Elvis. you don't even believe it. Yes, I do! <laughs> All right, welcome back. We're joined now by Big 3 analyst Jim Jackson and Big 3 superstar Katino Mobley. Let's return to the topic we got into yesterday. <laughs> LeBron's strange relationship with his new team's fan base. Reportedly, LeBron will finally address his NBA-shaking move to L.A. later this month, but will actually do so from his hometown of Akron. Since joining the Lakers, LeBron's had a mural to face no show at a pizza event he teased he would be at, ignored the team's coach for a couple of weeks, and had major media outlets question whether fans here even want him. Oh, boy. <laughs> Cowherd. Uh... I just don't think Laker fans will ever fully embrace LeBron. I, 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 let me give you... I'm going to throw you out my best talking point. Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees. Never embraced. Alec won two because, MVPs, you know never why? embraced. Because they had Jeter in his prime when he arrived. They got Kyle Kuzma. LeBron's the savior. They've been winning 24, 21, 17. By the way... How can a team with 16 titles need saving? Well, by the way, Alabama needed Nick Saban before he arrived. They were a mess. And Oklahoma needed Bob Stoops before he arrived. And Oklahoma needed... John Calipari, the day before he arrived. All these big brands go down. By the way, there's an old saying in sports, next man up. In L.A., mm -hmm. it's next superstar up. <clears throat> next title up. They're going to win one with him. Well, I mean, you got to think about it, too, right? You're talking about 17, 18 championships, right? 16, yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. The, the Laker fans, you can not have two years in a row, no playoffs. They, I mean, they go crazy, right? So all these, these few years that's been bad for them, they need that guy. Yeah. They need that guy. They need him to deliver titles, he, multiple. Let's well, do multiple. One let's do one. Well, you talked about does a franchise like this need a LeBron? Well, they needed a Phil Jackson to come in and kind of get the titles done. Fact. So, but keep in mind, too, because I heard you talking about this earlier. What was there? Kareem came in and replaced him, okay? You had Jerry West, but Magic. Shaq came in. Kobe. The base is going to be, I think, pro Kobe because he was there from... They, they grew up with him. They saw him play. 80% of the base is going to be with him. But I will say this. When they start to win and LeBron puts on some highlights, they're going to embrace him. Will it be 90%, 100%? No. It's still going to be some out there. Because, now, keep in mind, LeBron is in the digital age. He's in the internet age. So now we get to know him a little bit more personally. So... The fan base is a little bit more objective to Kobe because they didn't really get to know Kobe like that until a little bit later, but they know LeBron. There's, there's some things, things that they don't like Rubik's, about LeBron. Exactly, but there's it two is. things. There's two I, things. I, he's making my point. They're not going to fully embrace this guy because, again, let's say they have regular season success. Laker fans don't care about regular season success. When they bow out of the first or second round of these playoffs, all hell's going to break loose because they have the best player in the world and their expectations are instant gratification. No, I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I, okay, so even if they go, they bow out in the second or third round, whatever round first that is, or first, second second, round. first or second round, whatever <laughs> round that is, you don't have the Paul Georges, you don't have the Kawhi Leonard's at the moment. So that... LeBron coming to Los Angeles, don't get it twisted. It wasn't... Stars wasn't coming here. They weren't... They weren't Paul George, Paul George, Paul George chose. Why do y'all gotta be prisoners of the moment? <laughs> Why do y'all gotta be prisoners they of the moment? They weren't coming here. LeBron time came out. here. Now they're gonna have stars come here. Hey, time That's out. How it's gonna At work. the trading deadline, you said the Cavs, after going one and zero with Rodney Hood, were gonna win it all. Come on, we're all prisoners of the moment. We I, love sports. And sometimes I'm a prisoner of the moment. But y'all acting like, oh my, we had two or three years where they didn't get a free agent. The tradition of the Lakers two or is. Three? The tradition of the Lakers is. Wilt came here. Kareem came here. Yeah, keep, Shaq came yeah, here. Yeah, keep, Whatever, whoever Spam. the biggest, most transcendent mm -hmm. star ends up in Los Angeles. Not for about eight How many years have the Lakers tradition? been in existence? 
and you talk, you're giving gaps. These are gaps. It ain't like every every four years there's a big year. I'm agent. They're not coming to Los Angeles. In the last 20 years, it's been just Kobe. That's period. You, you do. Let me break a name to you. You remember when Dwight Howard came here? He's oh, garbage now. Man. But at that time, he was a big. He was a big time. Uh, Dwight kid. Howard. He what? was a big time kid. He, he, at big that time. But, but it, it's it's this base. I don't know. It's kind of like when you look at Kobe, because of what he was able to accomplish. Again, the base grew, and I get it. They're always going to be pro Kobe fans because because they grew, it was 20, 20 years 20 in the years. making. Yeah. And even here's the funny part. Even when Kobe was going through the situation where he asked to be traded maybe to Chicago, it was some pushback from the, from the fan base. But yet and still, he was ours. He's our superstar. Mm -hmm. Other fan bases, if Kobe was to go to Boston, okay, we hate Kobe, but you know what? Mm -hmm. If he does something, they'll embrace him That's a little exactly bit more. That's exactly what it is. They'll embrace him, but not, I don't think, fully like maybe a Paul Pierce. L.A. LeBron don't have that much time. Up. He don't have that much time. L.A. is the greatest place in America to be a star in anything because we know how to treat you. It's also the fastest place in America they forget about you because there's a next mm -hmm. superstar coming. Exactly. This town has accepted five Supermans, six Batmans, <laughs> and at one time, two guys simultaneously <laughs> played the Hulk. <laughs> That's the downside to L.A. There's always another Batman. He's as good looking, as smart, as tall, as fast, as cool. That's how it works. They're coming off the, the boat. The dude is going to be 34 in December. Oh. He played 15 years someplace else. He is not theirs. Okay. And the only way to make him really a part of this is multiple championships okay. because they know... The dude's not even... So what if he win one in the next two years? Then what? If he wins one, he's off to a hell of a start. Oh, <laughs> but he's off to a bad start right now because he's, he's addressing his move to L.A. from Akron. This is the kind of thing that's going to make them say, man, he ain't Kobe, me... he ain't really ours. He's just using the Lakers. This ain't really about okay. basketball when was Kobe, and championships. When was, Kobe, when was Kobe Lakers? When was when did the Lakers say, you know what? Kobe's ours. You know when that was? Truthfully, 2007, eight around that when Shaq left because he was Robin. He wasn't Batman, and Kobe knew that. That's why he fought for those next two championships for himself. Comer, Kobe never went to the summer league. Yesterday, I like that one. And it was a big deal that LeBron went to Las Vegas in summer league. It's really hard to get a 34-year-old man to go to Las Vegas. Don't, <laughs> baby, I gotta go to Las Vegas for work. That's the greatest excuse in the world. Okay, time out. <laughs> the, you have to remember, let me let me address this, because you keep going back on this 16th year. You grew up in the NBA where you got you got pushed to the floor. Mm -hmm. You grew up in the NBA. It was a rebound. Most rebounds won every series. Mm -hmm. It's a cardio league. You can't touch anybody. You can't handshake Jim Jackson. Okay. You can't elbow him. 33 now is 30. LeBron doesn't hit the deck. LeBron, nobody touches him. Mm -hmm. Le when LeBron scores at the basket, they move away. The centers are European. They weigh 230 That's pounds. All fine and dandy, He's going to go to 39 years old. That's, That's all journey. fine and dandy. He's got six great years left. They got Golden State sitting out here in the Western Conference. They're not going to beat them in a year. Mm -hmm. But by that, by uh, uh, after one more title, if that team in Golden State stays together, yeah. how many times? They're not. Yeah. Yeah. Why Clay is that? Thompson, Clay Thompson may come to L.A. Thank you. Are you yeah. talking that, Jace? No, Clay no. Thompson may come to L.A., man. May. Hey, let's then what you going to say? Let's deal with the reality no, of you what said, it is. You said about reality, but you just said if. His dad's a Laker broadcaster. Said That's if. reality. Here's the reality. I'm listening. The <laughs> Golden State team, as constructed right now, Yeah. There's virtually nothing LeBron and the Lakers can do to beat that team. Oh, yes, yes sir. You, mean, you mean this year? Asking. You mean this year? No, no, no. If, no, no, it, if that year. group stays together moving forward. First of all, they got some tough guys. They got some tough guys. Lance, Rondo, he's they, 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 they don't want. Hold up, but Cat, Cat. Hold up, they're on one-year deal. This ain't rugby. <laughs> Let's say the iteration of Golden State stays like it is. Yeah. They've had some struggles with a LeBron-led team. Even though they got them, they swept them 4-0. LeBron them should have won the first game. They should have won that first game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, with, with, with limited yeah, talent. With limited that's talent. Right. Now Let's you start with the beginning. Hold Even on. though they swept them. Uh, no, no, no. They did. It was but, really tough. But, but they should, they should <laughs> have won tough. game one on a knucklehead play. Jace, that wasn't so, tough, that first come on, game. Come on. You thought, they, you thought they gave up. You thought they gave up. I know. I That changes everything. That changes everything. P.J. Tucker gave the Warriors fits. P.J. Tucker. Wait, wait till after next year, after that free agent class, and then and, we'll see. And by the way, they can do something. Trading deadline. They, Spurs getting nothing for Kawhi. 
they get desperate and they go, we'll take Josh Hart. Mm -hmm. Training deadline. That's your best. LeBron, you Kawhi. Better hope. That <laughs> better you hope. Be, that's your best. I may hope. have sources. It may be done. <laughs> that, that, that is your best. Hope. If it don't happen, you're gonna have you're to gonna admit. You're gonna apologize. You have to admit this LeBron thing is a potential circus that could blow up in everybody's face. You're lucky I'm leaving this show because I would be right on this and you don't have to <laughs> pay anything. I'm going to come on your show yeah. and, and prove to you how wrong you were. <laughs> this thing could blow up. They got all these damn football players and they, oh, they're tough. They, they can't shoot. <laughs> It's one year, and they're going to end up probably in the top five or six in the West. Watch. Thank you. In the and, West? Yes. In the league? Watch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. And, and we can end on this note. What? Because Laker fans, you know, Jim Jackson may not know, Y'all will not be satisfied with a fifth or sixth place finish in the West. Why? Is the best that doesn't player mean, in the league. league. But that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean that you can't make noise in the playoffs. Just because you finished fifth or sixth, ask Cleveland. They'll be happy with a Western Conference Finals Cleveland, appearance. The West, but, but, but the West is not as tough as When's you think. When's the last time the Lakers made the The West is... Oh, you, you trust Minnesota? You trust Portland? You, you trust Denver? When's the you last trust time Utah? the Lakers made the playoffs? That's When's what I'm saying, Jason. When's the last time they made Six the playoffs? When's the last time they made the playoffs? Six years ago, I think. Welcome back. Jim Jackson is back. We're joined now by the founder of the big lead, J-Mac, Jason McIntyre. Let's return to the association where LeBron finally met with his new coach, Luke Walton, over the weekend. Not sure what the hurry was. Despite the fact that LeBron had been giving Luke a bit of a cold shoulder since signing with L.A., Walton had nothing but praise for the new star, saying, quote, he's about the team. Whitlock, is it a big deal that these two finally met in mid-July? Yeah, it's, it's a deal. They needed to meet. I mean, he is the new coach. I, I, I think it needed to happen. Uh, but I'm not sure how substantive the meeting was. The, the report that was put out seemed like they were trying to put out a fire. Hey, LeBron and Luke haven't met, so let's arrange some kind of brief, short meeting, make sure we leak it to the media so that everybody can quit talking about that LeBron and Luke hadn't met. Hmm. Listen, here's why this is going to work. Luke, Magic, and LeBron are smart guys, and they all have the same mission. A lot of times in sports, it doesn't happen. A guy's last year of a contract, he wants to be good, he doesn't care about the team. You got a GM on the way out, you got a young coach. Happens all the time in sports, all leagues. Luke, LeBron, and Magic, they're well compensated, they're millionaires, and they all will look great with a title. And they all want to be here for the next decade. This is going to work. Smart guys headed in the same direction. Almost. Two of those guys are headed in the same direction. <laughs> Who's not? <laughs> One guy's headed to the unemployment. Oh, Who? Luke. Luke. Walton. Oh, Eric. Oh. I know. Je we, I know. You that's know why Jeannie they required a football team. Uh, Jeannie Buss is tight with Luke Walton. As yeah. Many stories mm -hmm. have been written about that, but this story, uh, it's a perfect internet story, right? The whole internet's going crazy. LeBron hasn't met with his coach. Oh, my. Uh, it's been a week. Well, how come it? They're not going to meet in training camp. They're not going to meet many times before the season. Jim, you know this. Like, come on. The coach and the LeBron, they're going to meet up. It's going to be fine. Luke Walton, we remember, guys, won 24 straight games with the Warriors a couple years ago to start the season. He was 39-4. and four. He's a former player. I see no issues whatsoever between Luke it, Walton. It, it's a big difference. We were talking about this on Undisputed. Popovich, yes, that's, that's a big difference. Larry Brown, Phil Jackson, yes. LeBron needed to hear and speak with Magic on the direction and what was going on, not the coach. He needed to figure out just Magic, not Rob Palenka, not anybody, not Genie. He had to hear from Magic. So to me, it's not a big issue because it wasn't a concern. But we always talk about LeBron and the beneficiaries with players. But I just put a little list together of coaches who benefited from being with LeBron. You got Eric Spolstra, came and got his extension. David Fisdale, assistant coach, two head jobs. How about Ty Lue? He came in as an interim, five years, $35 million. So LeBron's effect when he comes in, not just on players, but on coaches or guys in the front office, seemed to elevate. So Luke is in a great position because there's no pressure on him. Yeah. It's you no made a pressure. fair point. You made a fair point. The list of coaches LeBron's had fired is longer, though. Uh, what, we would agree. Who? We would agree. You would have got black. <laughs> Paul Silas. No, he, he, didn't have, he, did, he, he did not have He did not have Paul Silas fired. He did not. Uh, listen, he did not. I'm not, not LeBron elevates the coaches, right. the franchise. Hey, keep in mind, Black was there before he got there. I, I agree with that, but, but, but Jim, I can't believe we're sitting here, a former athlete, right. high at a high level. You're making the coach seem so inconsequential. 
that, that, that the best player in the world could join a team. Hey, if he meets with the coach two weeks down the line, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. In this situation, it's not. Because in this league, it's driven by superstars. It's not like the NFL. It's not They're like baseball. They're making that perfectly clear. It, I know. And that's but, one of the issues that happens when LeBron's on the team. But, and that, Everybody but knows but, LeBron's really running thing, not the coach. But, Jason, but you have to deal with that at some point if you're going to deal with LeBron James. There's only so many people that come along like this. And it, he's one of them. This is a whole different era. If Michael Jordan was in this era right now, you had to do the same thing with Michael Jordan. Flat out. And they know it when he comes in there. But he didn't disrespect Luke. Yeah. I think he and Luke have a good relationship. He texts him. It's just a difference in values. I, I, I'm a very coachable person, always respectful of authority. But times have changed. Always but trying but to times have changed. I, 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 you don't get along know. with me. But I, the people above me. <laughs> <laughs> I manage up. <laughs> All right, so another guy having problems with his coach, Kawhi Leonard, after demanding out of San Antonio, a number of suitors came calling for the Spurs star. But now, according to Brian Windhorst, the Raptors are in the driver's seat, yeah. while other teams like the Lakers and Sixers have basically given up. Cowherd, have the Spurs blown it on this trade? I, don't, I think blown it's too strong, but I think they'll get less now than they would have, and I think every week they'll have less leverage. I mean, you get to the trading deadline, and I'm the Lakers, I'm like, what do I have to give you? I'll just wait. I mean, listen, we're not going to win this year, and I'll just wait. I mean, I, here's the thing about the NBA. When a star, Melo, Dwight Howard, LeBron, when you get the feeling they don't want to be here, get them out fast. Because in the end, they can mm -hmm. poison the locker room. And Kawhi named the team. <laughs> so, the city. I mean, he named the city. It's not yeah. like I want out. I mean, what... What general manager who's got his two daughters in prep school, his wife has been moving around his whole basketball career, he's 52, he finally gets a big check. I'm going to give up draft picks and players for Kawhi. You get those GM jobs, they are gold. Yeah. You don't give those up and roll the dice on that kind of move? For, uh, listen, from what I understand, Portland still has some interest, and I would love to see Kawhi play with Dame Litter. McIntyre, we're actually doing this topic because I saw your tweets oh, did you? about this. Oh, boy. Make the case how the, you, you say the Spurs are blown this. Oh, totally blown this. Hold on. They're looking at maybe DeMar DeRozan. Okay, that's the big fish in this trade for, with Toronto if this happens. DeMar DeRozan is an all-star in the East. Is he even all-star in the West? No. Paul George didn't make the all-star team in the West. I, and now you're looking at getting a guy as a centerpiece of the trade from Toronto? I think that's absolutely crazy. As you said, they have blown this. I think the arrogance cost them. And, Jim, people are pushing back on me right. online. Here's, let me explain the arrogance. The Spurs have been so successful over the last two decades. Five championships with Duncan, crushing the draft with late first, second round picks. And the biggest one was last summer, LaMarcus Aldridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, he said, I want to be traded. Greg Popovich is like, whoa, let's meet up. Greg Popovich flipped him easily. He wanted to stay with the franchise. So Popovich thought he could do that with Kawhi. He goes to San Diego to meet him. <laughs> Kawhi's like, get out of here. I'm, I'm done. I don't want to be here. I think arrogance cost the Spurs. They're going to get nothing. Well, I, I agree with you on the arrogant side in regards to them being so successful. But just think about this. The Lakers weren't going to give up their young town. Yeah. So they were offering draft picks. Okay, knowing that Kawhi wanted to come there. So... He can come in as a free agent. But I think there's two schools of thought that we're not thinking about here. Kawhi runs the risk of exposing himself, himself if he's not healthy. His best leverage is right now, before he gets out there and plays, okay? Because if he's not healthy, he doesn't have the same leverage going into free agency, okay? Now, I just heard that he may go to USA Basketball yeah. in order to go show that he's ready to go, which is great. So the further we move into the season, depending on what happens with Kawhi, he can leverage up or... Like you said, Colin, the Spurs have so much less leverage as they go into the season. If I'm another team, I'm not offering up anything, you know? So I do believe that arrogance played a role, but I do think teams didn't offer a lot for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? They didn't Celtics offer a lot. Celtics weren't offering any other guys. Let me ask you this, Jason. What do the Lakers have to offer better than DeMar DeRozan? Well, you know, I, I'm of the proponent that if you haven't really seen the guy pop, Brandon Ingram, two years in the league. He played with Better a rookie. Better than DeMar DeRozan. Well, let me explain. DeMar, he, uh, Brandon Ingram played with D'Angelo Russell, who was a rookie, and Lonzo Ball, who was a rookie. You put him with a, around good players. Spurs have a lot of veterans. Mm -hmm. I think Ingram could pop. I would take Brandon Ingram way, over DeMar DeRozan. Why do the Lakers need to give him anything? He wants to play with us. I don't have to give you anything. No, Paul George wanted to play for the Lakers, too, <laughs> and now he's in OKC. But LeBron's way better, and he did come here.
The best no, no, player no, no, chose that people, people change their minds, is all I'm saying. And I think Kawhi Leonard, I would love to see him go play in Portland with Damian Lillard and then see if he really wants to leave and come to Los Angeles and play for the Lakers. All right, welcome back. Time for last call. Let's move to D.C., where Bryce Harper put on a show last night, crushing nine home runs in his final ten swings to take the home run derby crown in front of his home fans. You can expect more fireworks from Harper in tonight's All-Star Game on Fox. The Nats star set to become a free agent after this year and could earn a contract worth north of $400 million. Cowherd, is he worth it? Yep. Ten-year deal, $400 million. He doesn't lead baseball in OBP, but he leads baseball in three really important categories. <laughs> the BIS, butts and seats, RSQ, Rockstar Quotient, and HYG, hide your girl. He is a good-looking, uh, puff your chest, swagger, get me on a Tuesday night to a stadium presence that baseball needs. He is a personality in a sport. He reminds me a lot of Reggie Jackson. Do you know the acronym GTHOF? No. I'll explain it to you after the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> boy, I'll explain it to you after the show. But you have heard of Aaron Judge, right? You know, he wears a pinstripe uniform, plays for the most historic let's, franchise. Let's let him have another few months in the bigs. But uh, if, if Aaron Judge and Bryce Harper are walking across America, what, who do most of America... Oh, that's Aaron Judge. Bryce or do Harper! They go, oh, I... Bryce Harper... No uh, way. Bryce Harper. Aaron Judge is six foot eight. He plays for the New York Yankees. Yeah. And Bryce Harper... He was just in the World Series. And Bryce Harper put on a clinic last night. That was the WWE meets Bryce the Harper's NBA. Bryce Harper's hitting 211, Cowher. I'm not into averages. 211. You know what? Do you know what 211 is in police terms? What? Oh, my God, that's bad. That's <laughs> <laughs>